Not your average tabletop. Woohoo! Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nacho Average Tabletop. I'm Mac. And I'm Zach. And for today's videos, we're going to give our first thoughts on Pulsar 2849. And I always <laughs> have to look at the actual box to see that year because I don't remember it. So it's probably going to be referred to as <laughs> Pulsar for us. Yeah, there's no way I'm ever going to remember that, I don't think. No, and yeah, I don't know if it's, we're not the biggest sci-fi people, so I don't know if it's in you know some something that they use mm -hmm. to mean something i'm not sure but we're going to be referring to it as pulsar <laughs> yeah um i didn't really even know what a pulsar was either when we um started playing this so we got some new space terms to use in our everyday <laughs> life <laughs> right i'm still not sure if i know what they are but yeah. i maybe have an idea sort of mm -hmm. but no what were your first I mean, yeah, so we, we just got done playing. Uh -huh. This is literally like the remaining <laughs> um, board on the table after our final scoring. Mm -hmm. um, so we played two players. So there there are multiple. I don't know if you can see it, but there are all multiple player colors um, because in a two-player game, you have to use additional um, tokens from a... Um, from the other leftover ones to cover spaces on some of the planetary system tiles. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I guess my first thoughts are not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, what, were, what were you thinking going into it after seeing the box and then mm -hmm. kind of seeing the board set up, reading the rules? Well, I did the unboxing for this, and anytime, you know... <laughs> Okay, firstly, I just want to put it on the table. I stand by what I said in my unboxing. Um, I don't know if it's posted or not, but the plastic pieces in this game are lovely. So on point with the rest of the game, I just, I love them. The rockets are adorable, like so much fun. Um, the stacking of these little um, plastic round tiles is not great, um, but no. I wouldn't say, yeah. Yeah. on the trackers but i wouldn't say it's like terrible it's like any other game that does this poorly i'm thinking like maracaibo mm -hmm. um you know it's so standard to do something like this so it's it's disappointing but it's whatever it's not gonna hurt it but i will say right. every every other thing in here is cardboard pretty much other than um some plastic cubes and that is really disappointing <laughs> trying to get more points i see to, yeah i'm like <laughs> i feel like they they did so good on the plastic production that these could have easily have been you know um plastic production i would have loved to see that um i feel like the dice could have been plastic production like they're just wooden painted a certain color and so i would have loved to see silver dye or red dye in the same plastic production that they did <laughs> for the tiles and stuff and i think i mean it doesn't like kill the game but it's just so nice to have something cohesive um and i understand that pieces of this have to be cardboard and i you know that's fine and i think it's totally appropriate mm -hmm. other pieces i just felt you know if these are my game pieces the things that are sitting in front of me the things that i'm playing with i'd prefer for them all to be the same but yeah i was thinking that initially as well and there's probably a way you could do it but i think the cardboard since you end up putting um, I know. these pieces in there if it's and they a plastic fit so piece, well in there too yeah if it's a plastic piece and it doesn't fit then you might have problems but there would probably i'm sure there could be a way to do it yeah that you'd that it would almost always work mm -hmm. but i can i can see that yeah um but yeah i I was going into this mainly based off of Tom Vassell's review and it being a great Euro game, which Euro games are always games I like and point salad games are always games I like for sure when there's multiple mm -hmm. paths to victory and multiple things you can do that kind of change up each game to game. Um, and you can try different methods and still potentially win using mm -hmm. totally different ways. Um, yeah, I, I initially thought that I would enjoy this game but i wasn't 100 percent sure because um a lot of the time i'm not into space themes as much which um, is funny considering we have a bunch of space themed games right yeah I, I mean i guess there's not that many i guess i'm counting terraforming mars that's not ours right but yeah i, I really like that one too so yeah. maybe i do like maybe i just need to play more space games i i guess i'm just not into the theme of space as much mm -hmm. i guess but no i still thought i would really enjoy this game from the start and I was not <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> I there's definitely a lot in the first game, so we actually didn't play with the. There's player boards that you can choose to play with, board. or not, your headquarter board. 
that you can choose to play with or not play with. We just... The, ru- the rule book <laughs> recommended not playing with them for your first game. Right. And, and so yeah. I was like, let's not use it then. Right. And, and Tom Vassell said you should use it right away, but he also said that there was possibly some a- analysis paralysis type stuff in the yeah. game. So we kind of thought, well, it already looks like there's mm-hmm. a lot on here. Maybe we'll just not play with it the first time. Yeah. Just so that we can kind of get used to what's going on here and mm-hmm. um, get used to those main actions. But I think... Um, I looked at a couple of the boards after we played, and I think it would have been nice to have those, but it's still a very tight <laughs> game, and it already felt like you didn't get enough actions to do yeah. everything you wanted to do, so just adding even more things you could do, it's, I mean, it's interesting for sure, and it yeah. gives you more options, but mm-hmm. that's, at the same time, it's like, oh boy, <laughs> this is, <laughs> what, what do I do with these few actions? It makes it seem like an even scarcer resource. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Well, like, uh, Zach, so today, so getting to playing this game, Zach gave me, like, four options today and said, we have to learn a new game, pick one of these four. And uh, I wasn't really sure because I had unboxed all of them, and I was like, oh, one of them for <laughs> sure looks terrible. Like, I don't know on some of these other ones. And I was like, you know, space-themed game, themed games are normally pretty nice to me, so... Let's go with that, and so I did, and then uh, as I was reading the rule book, I thought, this should be pretty manageable. Um, the dice piece, um, where you choose dice, or roll and then place them, and then choosing, mm-hmm. reminded me a lot of um, Grand Austria Hotel, so mm-hmm. it was nice to kind of have something a little familiar, and then the rest, once we found... And playing like the actions, too, yeah. with the two dice that you get is... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's the one that reminds me of most of the Grand Austria Hotel. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're good. And then I, I thought... Um, yeah, I agree with Zach on everything. It was so tight. I don't normally get analysis paralysis, but I was first player and I sat here looking at the board and I was like, what do I do? Because <laughs> 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 there's so much and it depends on what you what dice numbers get rolled and then mm-hmm. how much you're willing to move your tracks back and forth. Um, so you're balancing a lot of things, I feel like. And it'll probably get easier as we play the game more to discern what you know what kind of works. Mm -hmm. and what doesn't work or what things you should be looking at getting together Mm -hmm. but i you know up until like the sixth round i felt like i was just i was just playing (laughs) and i started looking at like what do we score at the end of the game (laughs) and then i still didn't even realize to go for the goal pieces and so uh, considering that i only lost by like 11 points Mm -hmm. um that's pretty good (laughs) i think for me um but i will say it was it was really hard to make decisions sometimes, um, and yeah, I like it. it it's really, really tight. Really it tight. Is. And maybe it's just because it's a two-player game. No, you, get, you only get two dice in every game, mm-hmm. every size game. So that's going to be... <laughs> That's going to be tough, I think, and right. it was nice on the planetary board because you could really just go anywhere you wanted to mm-hmm. um, and not really have to worry about whatever because you kind of stayed in your lane but with more players that definitely is not going to be a thing right yeah and what was i gonna oh yeah we didn't really use what were these ones again uh terminal tiles links yeah we didn't really use many of the or we never bought many of those because it was so tight transmitter tiles yeah transmitter tiles but i'm kind of wondering if yeah, it's a viable strategy to mm-hmm. buy a ton of those. Yeah, I'm sure it is, but I, <laughs> I just kind of wanted to do the things I could see, it seemed yeah. like. So we didn't really play with neither of us. You got one, I got two. Yeah. Um, and I was going to get it if it hadn't been for the dice roll, I think. <laughs> right. Right, which, yeah, definitely makes it tough sometimes when you don't get the right dice mm-hmm. to come up. Um, I mean, you can, there are ways to change the dice slightly. Um, as well with the modifiers, plus one or minus one and plus two, minus two, mm-hmm. um, which I think is a, a necessary thing in games like this where you're using dice. You want to be able to modify them at least a yeah. little bit when you're kind of basing it off of chance. You should be able to typically, I'm assuming, get it to the number you want mm-hmm. with that. I mean, there's cases where you might not be able to, but yeah. most of the time you should be able to, mm-hmm. um, which I liked and then also what did you think of this board in two players the track where if you take dice you either go up or down on turn order and up or down on uh, some of the production 
between rounds. I liked it. I mean, I'm not... I'm not really one who goes for negative, um, you know, negative interaction, I guess. And so it, it seriously just like de-incentivized me to go to the right of the median marker, which I think, I don't think it hurt me too much because of the way I scored. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I think it was fine overall. I just, I don't know that, you know, taking that extra risk would have helped me at all. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is a little sticky though. I think just like, is that going to go up on this track or this track? I mean, it's because you want to you want to keep first player, or mm -hmm. I, if nothing else, I wanted to keep back to back dice choices, um, right. because often it was either me Zach me Zach or it was Zach me me Zach. Yeah. Um, and so I I liked that proponent of it. The thing that I wish I had realized more was just you need four white die or four white cubes in order to get one red die. Yeah. Which, and I, I will, sidebar, side note, the red die, I think it was really clever. It's a bonus die, and you mm -hmm. can only buy it or it's given to you. But if you get multiple red die, you know, for whatever actions you're taking, you can still only use one. And I thought yeah. that was really smart. That, that, I was going to bring that up, too, it. that the red dice, I was going to ask you what you thought of that. It's, yeah. That seemed like also a tough thing yeah. to get additional red dice each yeah. turn. and But that's a huge thing, too, because it... It gives you an additional, basically 50%, a third turn in a way, a third die, mm -hmm. which is huge in this game when there's eight rounds, so you get 16 dice that you draft each time, so it's really, you start with 16 minimum turns, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, trying to get that red die each round um, makes it really interesting uh, to see if you can hopefully pull that out but then at the same time like you said you don't want to get it twice in one round because mm -hmm. then you only get to use the one, one. which <sighs> i don't know what i think about that because how many times did we get the red die and that might have been two because we didn't use many of these yeah it seemed like the only way we got red dice was by paying the four white cubes i paid once or... and then i got on planets i got two, oh yeah two that's true and that was it yeah i forgot i did the only plan I landed on with one was the time that I already got, or I'd already gotten a red die, so yeah. that kind of didn't work out. But exactly, yeah. Going back to that track in a two-player game, I felt like I took some more of the uh, higher dice, which forced. So in the two-player game, you have two of your discs on each track, mm -hmm. and I was any time I seemed to kind of pick the lower dice, I'd move my one chip this way, and any time I took the higher d dice, I would move my chips behind that way, mm -hmm. only to right before the point where you start losing <laughs> points. So, he was living a, on the edge. In a three to four player game where you only have one on there, it'll be interesting to see how many of the higher dice I would actually be willing to take, because I won't have that option of being able to kind of split you that. You won't be able to secure your that. spot, you know, up there at the top. And I think, I think I did a good job of, like, not letting you have one on the engineering track too mm -hmm. much, but I feel like you also kept one enough to have four... To have, a, to have four engineering cubes in order to buy a red die more mm -hmm. than I did. Because no. I think I had only gotten there like once. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, you're like, oh, it's fine. I'll just take one. That's fine. But when there's only eight rounds, not, <laughs> not fine. Not fine. So. Mm -hmm. But no, at the same time, though, I think uh, kind of once you get to know everything around the board, it's really not that difficult to know what the actions are no. available to you. Right. It's just the, which ones do I want to take this turn? Mm -hmm. Which is always nice when you can do that when it's not like you're all you're yeah. not only thinking of, what do I want to do this turn, but, oh wait, what do those actions do again? It's mm -hmm. the, the actions themselves are quite simple, yeah. um, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, in, the first, in the first turn, I was like, what do I do? <laughs> right. And then in the last turn, it becomes, like, it, just one gameplay. One gameplay. It was like, okay. So these are my options, and very easy to be like, take this, take this. You know, it was a little bit of like, well, if I do this, then I'm gonna do that, and that's fine, whatever. But um, and maybe it's just because it's the last round. But I felt like as the rounds went on, I was better able to make decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I felt as well. Um, no, any other major thoughts about the game? I I know uh, some of the options I got here that were like ongoing benefits. 
I think I might have forgotten to score some of those sometimes, that which is. it was hard to. I'm not saying it's hard to remember, but sometimes it's just, it's easy to forget. Mm -hmm. It more is. Than I mean, to remember. I tried to reference the player thing so we would remember <laughs> everything, but like, not these don't always go. The, it doesn't tell you about the technologies at the end because you you have to score them when you're doing whatever mm -hmm. the item is that gives you points. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I probably also had forgotten. Um, Probably that the one where you get three points. And, and the and red the one. one, yeah, because that was any time you laid it, and I don't think I got, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I got this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, or that one. <laughs> so, that's uh, five points right there. Six points. Uh. Wow. <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's good. Um, I'm, uh, my rating is whether or not I'm willing to come back to the table for it. Um, there are some games we play where I'm just like, I'm okay if I don't have to play this one <laughs> again. Um, but this one, I'm okay coming back to the table. Hmm, nice. Well, I'll give an initial rating that I think this game could achieve. And I think it's going to be an 8.5 for me. Mm. And I would definitely come back to the table for it. And I would definitely play this game right now again <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> just with <laughs> with the different uh end of game scoring options yeah. and the different technology options um i think it's just one that i could i could play multiple times in a row and not mm -hmm. not be sick of it personally i mm -hmm. don't know if that's the same for you but no it's i think this one's at least an 8.5 for me and it could potentially go up kind of once i you know, understand a little more. I still wouldn't say that, oh, I, I know exactly what I'd want to do next time, but um, definitely knowing the options and the fact that you can change up a lot of how the whole board is set up changes the game from game to game and just gives you more options to. I don't know. We'll have to victory. see. I know Tom said there's a lot of replayability, but the transmitter tiles never change they always come out but they're in different orders i know but they're always coming out a first then b then c and i feel like this is the type of game where you could absolutely get into a groove of what you know is a winning strategy or i mean it it depends on what the dice roll and stuff and what you have out there so there probably is still a lot of replayability but mm -hmm. i feel like after a while you definitely could hack it yeah maybe there are so many things that inter that are interconnected to scoring and if you look at the board, you can see how that, how some of these would work out. You know, like that one was different gyro things, mm -hmm. um, planets and that. And so like you could kind of work around the end goals in order to get some of these things, I think, better. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think this will probably be a 7 or 7.5 for me. Hmm. Maybe an 8. We'll see. Hmm. That, that's, I was thinking you'd probably say about a 7. I wasn't 100% sure. But... It's it, good. Seemed, it seemed like you enjoyed it enough as we were playing it. Yeah. Which, where there's some that I know. <laughs> That's not quite the case. But no, I think this is, I think it's a great game. And if you like Euro-y, thinkier games, I would definitely recommend trying it out. Um, if you have analysis paralysis or someone you game with has analysis paralysis, be ready to have patience. <laughs> right, because then, yeah, I think it, it could also be a game that goes on a long time if yeah. if you're uh, slower players always trying to look for the maximum points, then I think mm -hmm. it could go on a long time. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I think it's a great option. We'll have mm -hmm. to play it some more, see where it ends up. <laughs> but we will see you next time with another game that we'll give our initial thoughts on. Woohoo! What game's it going to be, Mackie? <laughs> Only if it had to be one of those three, the other three. Time that will you... <laughs> tell. I probably would have said Predaporter. It Ooh, was, it Predaporter. was between this and Predaporter. So. Ooh, so that might be the next one we do. Next month. <laughs> well, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to keep on nibbling. <laughs>